Muhammad breaking his vows, and this is perfectly acceptable with Allah. What, what's the general rule on breaking vows in Islam, Sam? Uh, well, in Islam, uh, if, if you're breaking an oath, there are pastors who tell you you shouldn't, but if you do, then you can make expiation for it. In other words, you can make atonement, Allah forgive you. However, there are places in which Allah is actually ordering Muhammad to break his vow. Mm -hmm. There is actually a passage in the Quran that ta Muhammad is ordering, I'm sorry, Allah is ordering Muhammad to break his vow. So it's not simply breaking a vow and then repenting and expiating for it. Here's a situation in which the Quran itself has Allah telling Muhammad, break the vow that you made, the oath that you made towards your wives. And I think you have that reference and what the context is. Well, yeah, um, and, and I invite people to read the entire, read the entire passage. We're, we're short on time, so I'll read uh, chapter 66, verses 1 through 2, and then we'll read uh, what Tafsir Jalalain, one of the most popular Islamic commentaries of all time, says about this revelation. Chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. O Prophet, this is Allah speaking to Muhammad, why do you forbid yourself that which Allah hath made lawful for you? You seek to please your wives, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Allah indeed has sanctioned for you the expiation of your oaths, and Allah is your protector, and He is the knowing, the wise. So notice what what uh, Allah says here, uh, uh, Muhammad, you, you outlawed something for yourself that I didn't tell you to do in, because you wanted to please your wives. And now I'm telling you, you can, you can cancel that oath. Well, what's this talking about? Muslims tell us to go to context. We'd love to go to the context here because this context is very, very frightening. This is Tafsir Jalalain's commentary on chapter 66, verse 1. O prophet, why do you prohibit what God has made lawful for you in terms of your Coptic handmaiden, Maria? Yeah, this is Mary the Copt. Mary in English, yeah. Yeah, well, what's, what's, what, what's going on here? When he lay with her in the house of Hafsa, who had been away, but who upon returning and finding out became upset by the fact that this had taken place in her own house and on her own bed. She's having sex with her on her bed. Uh, in her house. Muhammad, no, it's her house, right? Mm -hmm. Muhammad was having sex with his slave girl, Mary the Copt, in the bed of his wife, Hafsa. When she was not home. <laughs> and when she was out. So she goes out, she's doing a little shopping at the marketplace. She comes back, finds Muhammad in bed with his slave girl, in her bed, right? The bed where she sleeps at night. Wow. And so Muhammad said, she is unlawful for me, seeking by making her unlawful for you to please your wives. And God is forgiving, merciful, having forgiven you this prohibition. Exactly. So he had made an oath, by the way. Yes. So the kind of, I, I swear I'll never touch her again. So he's worried. And by the way, what was he worried about? He was worried Hafsa was going to go tell Aisha. Aisha. Right? And then, and then Hafsa Christ. did go and tell Aisha. Yeah, yeah. And then so Muhammad's wives confront him. What are you doing? Having sex with your slave girl. In the, in the bed of one of your wives. What is wrong with you, right? You're going around having sex with 11 of your wives and you can't stop having sex with your slave girl it. as well? What is wrong with you, Muhammad? I swear by Allah, I will never do it again. Exactly. I won't do it again. I'll never do it again. I swear, I swear, just, just forgive me of this. Okay, Muhammad, you sworn you're not going to do it again. We're going to forgive you. And everything is fine until, until Allah, Allah jumps yeah. in and says, Muhammad, I didn't tell you to forbid that, that slave girl for yourself. I didn't, tell you to make, I didn't tell you to make that oath. Now we're canceling that oath, and you can go back to having sex with your slave girl. And he eventually got her pregnant, didn't he? And yeah, with the son Ibrahim who died, mm -hmm. uh, and didn't live full life. He actually died before Muhammad. So again, you're telling me this is the eternal speech of Allah? Mm -hmm. Chapter 66, verse 1 and 2 is part of his eternal speech. Uncreated, mm -hmm. existed before creation. So again, Allah is worried about Muhammad imposing uh, rules upon himself that Allah never imposed on him. Mm -hmm. So this is what Allah was busying himself in eternity before creation. Absolutely. I mean, there are all sorts of things that Allah could have been talking about, but he just had some uh, strange obsession with satisfying Muhammad's sexual desires. And by the way, Aisha noticed this, didn't, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, she goes, I see your Lord hastens to fulfill your desires. Yeah, Aisha noticed. Your own wife notices every time you want something, you get a revelation from God saying, yeah, you Eternal, get that. Eternal, uncreated in origin. Mm -hmm. And then this is, and then the, just to icing on the cake, Sal Bukhari, volume 4, number 361, volume 4, 361, final part to go with this oath-breaking. 
Muhammad says, if I ever take an oath to do something, and later on I find that it is more beneficial to do something different, I will do the thing which is better and give expiation for my oath. Mm -hmm. And here's a classic example. And so, uh, Muhammad's word is as good as gold. Yeah. Fool's gold, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.